Honor to be here. Thank you, everyone, for spending the time with us. My name is Parul Mishra. Uh, I am the Vice President of Product Management at IBM, and um, specifically for our Watson uh, brand of products, Watson Orchestrate, Watson Assistant, Watson Discovery. And uh, that is IBM's digital labor solution, and uh, very much based on AI and automation. So I couldn't be more thrilled to be here talking about those two things that is top of mind for everyone. Uh, and most excited to have Art and David here because what we want to talk to you uh, about is AI and automation, but really in action through a use case. So uh, before we get any deeper into that, uh, I would love for Art and David to introduce yourselves. Um, to our audience here. Sure. Hi, Art Amador, Chief Operating Officer and Co-Founder of AccuBot. Uh, Dave Odenath, uh, Global Head of Quantitative Investment Solutions, or QIS. Um, we develop systematic investment tra uh, trading strategies for a variety of customers, from uh, retail uh, customers in the United States and Asia to some of the largest sovereign wealth funds in the world. Excellent. So. Um, the solution that we're very excited to share with you all here is based on the collaboration between the three companies, which I think is amazing because what uh, David brings from an HSBC perspective is the very bread and butter. Think about any role that is so, so in tune with the market dynamics and the investment strategies. And then what Art brings to the table is the AI element of it, which is how do you mine through all of this data that is available to us today? Um, that data availability was a problem several decades ago. Now the problem at hand is how do you derive insights from that? And that is what uh, art brings to the table. And then we came from IBM side and we said, look, we have invested so much in the core Watson technologies, which is let's go mine a lot of that unstructured data that's out there and bring that out in, from, in, in the form of insights. And then how does all of this come together to add value to the user? Because end of the day, we're all here because we want to add more value to the users, to our customers. So I um, would love, David, for you to share maybe a little bit more in depth on, on the solution. And I actually personally have not asked this over coffee. Who came up with this idea? Was it you or was it Art? <laughs> I'm dying to know. Oh, I don't know. It was definitely a collaborative effort. So look, you, you hit the nail on the head, right? It started with data, right? And it started with the fact that we saw the exponential growth of data over the last several years and even before that. And we also observed some institutional investors that uh, were asking us for a lot of data. Uh, and, and we were kind of seeing the success that they were having. And so for us, it was, you know, how can we get, uh, you know, get our arms around both the structured and the unstructured data, and, and is that going to lead to more informed investment decisions, right? And so that was, um, that was kind of the, the use case and the, and, and the thesis behind it. You know, how do we make better formed investment decisions um, and you know, leveraging the IBM technology and the, and, and the Equibot technology and being able to sort through all of it has, has been integral to that process. Great, Art, are you going to let him just steal it? <laughs> That's the idea. It <laughs> um, also, I think IBM also gets a lot of credit for this too. So, um, for background, yeah, Dave and his team had reached out to us um, and expressed interest in uh, our mission, which was how do we transform data into better investment decisions? And we had a, a series of conversations together uh, where we helped him understand and his team understand uh, how we were using IBM Watson's NLP to analyze millions of global news articles uh, every single day, and then combine that um, unstructured and, and other textual data with traditional uh, market and fundamental data. And so uh, once his team had a really good understanding of, of how the Ekibot and the Watson technologies worked, uh, then they leveraged their expertise to come up with a, with a framework on how to best use the technologies uh, which um, would play out in a, uh, you know, in, a, in a portfolio strategy. And so that was the, uh, the genesis of Apex, and um, I'm pretty proud of what uh, the three of us have built together. Um, it's you know, demonstrated that it can you know, add a few hundred basis points over other traditional market indices you know, over a full market cycle. And also, there's a ton of investor interest in this. There's uh, $3.5 billion um, of products tied to this distributed all over the globe, and that's thanks to, to Dave and his team. Thank you. Um, 
It is truly exciting. I think this is a solution we can all relate with. Uh, but more than that, um, it's the power of AI and automation in combination, which I personally truly believe in. Uh, and this is a perfect use case for that. Um, at IBM, we, um, we of course, we have, uh, uh, we have done a lot in the AI space. Uh, we have had some missteps as well in uh, figuring out what's the right channel for AI. Um, is everyone ready for AI? Is it consumable today? Um, but we truly, truly believe in AI, and we, we've been at the forefront for it for several years. Um, but we're also very, very careful about the responsibility, because with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, so we're very, very conscious of how AI is applied in use cases today, because it's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a very um, uh, interesting space, but it's very, very um, uh, scrutinized space as well. Um, so as an example, uh, within our product suite, Watson Orchestrate, uh, we are automating talent acquisition, which is a. a, a a very, very big area of opportunity in terms of automation and AI, right? Think about there are so many candidates out there, there are job roles, but that matching is very hard today to make. But AI in that situation, as an example, has to be unbiased. It's very, very, very important for the AI that is in place today to be responsible. Uh, which is what we stand by. And um, I think as we started working together, uh, that was an element that everybody agreed that there's so much promise in AI, but that responsibility, how do we bring that in? Um, and so I would love to hear uh, David and uh, Art's uh, thoughts about AI and still having humans in the loop so that AI is augmenting humans. Uh, and what value you see in, in that terms. Yeah, so we, we believe that AI will absolutely, it is uh, boosting employee productivity and creativity and, and innovation. In fact, you know, Apex um, is the first of its kind. Um, prior to automation and big data, uh, it wasn't even possible. And when I think about uh, our business, uh, we've got over 100,000 models running right now. And without um, some of the automated internal tools that we have, and also all the great tools, automation tools that we're, we're using through um, IBM Watson, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to manage all those. And as you mentioned, there's, there's great tools as it relates to um, data bias and, and model drift. Uh, but at the end of the day, no matter how much you automate, you, you, still, need, you still need people. Um, you know, it, was, it was a person, right? a very creative idea, uh, was Apex. Right, and um, you also need people to uh, supervise, right, to train the machines and to, to oversee things, so that way you you know that the data is flowing through the system as intended, and that the uh, results that you are um, looking to to accomplish, um, uh, you're seeing them. David, any thoughts on that? Yeah, like I, I mean, what started with Apex, right, is now blossomed into a suite of different strategies that we distribute across the world, right? And it's also encouraged our competitors and our peers uh, to come up with their own sets of strategies and things like that, right? And so um, we were the first to the space, but we're not the only ones in the space now. Um, and I, you know, we've hired a lot of people as a result of that, right? And I think if it was somewhat about kind of retooling our education, right, our, to our salespeople and to our product specialists uh, around the world, but, you know, the, the net there's a net gain in terms of personnel, at least from our perspective. So um, <clears throat> there are a lot of people in the audience I hear that are either chief automation officers or are stewards for automation. Um, would you have any, any advice for, for the audience, including me? Because I have been trying to drive automation within IBM. Both of you, how did you do it uh, within your enterprises, and what guidance might you have for us? Yeah, automation is a uh, continuous process, and the uh, the more difficult or complex the problem is, uh, probably the more uh, persistent and patient you need to be. So I think um, step one is probably to think about the, um, the the problem and the end result or the goal that you're trying to accomplish, and then from there you can figure out the uh, the who, what, where, when, and why of, of what you uh, what aspects you want to you want to automate. 
Um, and it's not just about investing in the, in the technology, it's also the, the people, right? Um, technology uh, moves fast like markets, and uh, it's important to have the, the right people uh, to analyze the technology and to implement the technology for you. David. Uh, I, I don't have anything to add. <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, well, then I'm just going to ask you a question that's not on the script. All right. Um, what is the biggest challenge you faced, if any, to drive this within HSBC? Yeah, oh, that's a good question. I, look, I think it was, it was kind of skepticism around the technology in general, right? And, and so, I, you know, I would credit um, IBM a lot with helping us along the way uh, in that regard, right? Because developing the product was relatively easy, um, but convincing folks to take that leap into the AI space beyond what was more kind of traditional quantitative, um, it was a global effort, and there was a lot of education uh, from a lot of folks at IBM and a lot of folks at Equibot, you know, training centers around the world, a lot of webinars, a lot of commercials and things like that to get folks on board, right? Um, and, and, you know, we were met with a healthy amount of skepticism at first, but as I said, right, um, since then, there's been a lot of success, and, and there's a lot of folks that are kind of following in our wake now. So, um, but it wouldn't have been possible with, without IBM and the resources that they brought to the table and the education uh, and, and the brand recognition to, to, to encourage folks to, to say, you know what, this is different, but I'll, I'll check it out. Um, thank you for openly sharing that. Uh, I've been with IBM for 18 years, and uh, I've worked in different roles, and I can tell you that um, even within IBM, <laughs> to drive that transformation and to get um, our own company to embrace some of these technologies has been a journey. And I think that uh, reflects any company's journey, any business's journey on that path of AI. Um, we have, um, we uh, implemented Watson Assistant within IBM for HR, and it's called Ask HR. Um, it started with uh, a lot of resistance, I'll be very honest, with, uh, from a lot of IBMers because it felt like that human support was being taken away and now there was technology answering questions. Uh, but a lot of people, including me, because I was a customer of this technology at one point, um, you realize that you're getting access to information much faster and that information is reliable. And when that starts happening, now, therefore, we are um, moving up the value chain in that journey and offering more automation through that same channel of conversational AI. So um, it truly is a, a journey, and you have to bring people along. And um, one of the uh, examples that I love, which I, have, I love to read, so it's from history, but even when elevators were coming up, I heard the last panel was on elevators, so I need to be careful. Uh, but when elevators were coming up, um, uh, there was uh, someone in the elevator to press the buttons for you. It was not needed. The technology did not need it. But initially, there was a lot of resistance from people, because how do you get in this small cabin, and how do you how do you believe that it goes up and down and it takes you up and down? It was a big leap of faith for a lot of people at the time. So it was very comforting for someone to be there and press the button. So uh, I feel like a lot of these technological um, evolutions that we are driving in automation and AI, uh, it's a journey and um, uh, people need to be uh, brought along on that journey with a sense of belief. So any last parting thoughts, any, anything that comes to mind that you would like to leave everyone with? I'll just add on to that. Um, we always hear AI, you know, the AI raise. Uh, AI first inning, uh, and it's not a 40-yard dash. It's a marathon, so invest early. Good point. Always talking about investments. <laughs> David. No, again, right, it's... To me, it's all about education, what it is and what it isn't, and setting expectations, right? In terms of any sort of product, whether it be financial products or other, right? I think it's all about uh, setting expectations and then following through on it. Um, and so, again, the resources that IBM has been able to provide uh, us along the way have been integral in our ability to do that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks to the whole global team. Fantastic.